Hey, I'm Lana from Lana Glowshot Art, and in this video, we'll be unboxing the June 2024 sketch box. This box is all about working with charcoal and exploring value, and I'm gonna share with you a bunch of fun, moody mark-making techniques. Ready? Let's go. The surface in this month's box is the Nova Series Mixed Media Paper by Stillman & Burn. This is a gray toned surface that accommodates a variety of different materials. Next up, we have the Nitrum Charcoal Starter Kit, featuring a block that you can use to sharpen your four sticks of charcoal. These charcoal sticks come with a blunt flat edge, but you can use the sandpaper on the block to bring your charcoal to a sharp Point. Simply lay the stick of charcoal down at an angle and rub it back and forth. And I strongly recommend that you collect all of the material that you sand off because this powder can be used to tone your drawing and to lay down soft, subtle shades. These charcoal sticks range from hard to extra soft. And here I'm using the hard charcoal stick to sketch in a three-dimensional cube. This cube doesn't need to be perfect. In fact, you can soften up mistakes with your finger and will also also be laying charcoal over the top of this so you won't see any of those mistakes you made earlier on. Next up we have the Hero Arts Blending Brush. The soft bristles on this brush will be perfect for laying in that powder that we created when we sharpened our charcoal sticks. The light source is coming from the top left, so I'm applying the charcoal in the background, that front right plane, and the cast shadow on the surface. And then after I have full coverage with my charcoal everywhere, I'm using my finger to come through and blend this out. That allows allows me to work this loose dust into the surface of the paper. Next up, we have the Create a Color Charcoal Set in soft, medium, and hard. Using my medium charcoal pencil, I'm coming in and darkening that plane on the right. This plane will be the darkest because it's nearly parallel to the light source that is coming in from the top left. And I'm allowing it to be darker at the top and fade out as I come towards the bottom. At this point, we have several different charcoal tools and you may be wondering which one to use when. Well, the softer charcoal tools are going to be a little bit darker and are going to have softer blends, whereas the harder charcoal tools will hold a sharper point and will be really great for crisp detail work. When it comes to creating lighter values, we have the kneaded eraser and the Rembrandt Pastel in gray. It's common to think of erasers as a tool to get rid of mistakes, but when you're working with charcoal, I want you to consider your eraser as a drawing tool. You can use your kneaded eraser to pull away darker values and reveal lighter values. Here, I'm sculpting the kneaded eraser into a specific shape and using it to draw straight lines. I can also use it as a stamp or to rub the value away completely to create really specific shapes. Because the gray pastel is lighter than your paper, you can use this to introduce lighter values and you can use all different sides of your pastel to create a variety of different marks. Here I'm using a little chunk of kneaded eraser to remove some of the charcoal from the bottom of the right side of the cube. This is allowing me to show reflected light and I'm also able to clean up the cast shadow. I use the Rembrandt pastel to lighten up the other two faces of this cube, with the top face being the very lightest, and I'm applying more pastel there. Then I blend and smooth out these surfaces. The final step is just to clean up and polish the edges. Last but not least, we have the Sharpie Peel Off China Markers in black and white. Toward the top of your China marker, you'll notice a string. You can use this string to expose more of the material. You'll just simply pull down and then unravel the exposed paper. You only want to remove a small amount at a time, however, because if you have a lot of China marker exposed and pushed down hard, you will experience breakage. China markers have a completely different texture than the charcoal and pastel in this set. In fact, these materials won't mix together at all and the waxy quality of the china marker will resist the charcoal. Charcoal and pastel blend and can be easily manipulated to create a variety of different values. But these china markers require a lot of pressure to lay down a mark that isn't going to move. It's a fairly blunt instrument, so it's not great for fine details, but it is really good for applying your brightest whites and your darkest darks. And this tool is also going to be pivotal for drawing shapes that you don't want to move at all. 
The prompt for this month is Storm, and throughout this video, I have taught you all the skills that you need to create a stormy landscape. The last skill that we need to work on is silhouettes, which will be perfect for playing around with our china markers. A silhouette refers to the outline of a shape filled in with a solid color. So with a silhouette, you're not seeing value gradation. Instead, it is a dynamic or interesting shape that is completely solid and filled in. When when we think silhouettes, we often think shadows or the shape of something with the sunset in the background. On this page, I am creating several desert inspired silhouettes that play around with interesting shapes. And then I'm using the China marker with a ton of pressure to fill them in. Although silhouettes are often solid black, I'm playing around with this same idea with the white China marker as well to create a really fun, bold page. For my stormy landscape, I'm using the softest charcoal stick to sketch in a very loose composition. I chose the softest stick because these lines are going to be a lot more flexible and movable. And right now I'm just figuring out where everything is going to go. I also didn't sharpen this particular stick because I don't need crisp, sharp lines. Once I have a rough idea of where the clouds, the cactuses, and the ground is going to be, I begin to lay in some value for my clouds. These are stormy clouds, so I want them to be darker than the paper. And I'm still using my soft charcoal stick in quick circular motions. Then I blend everything out with my Hero Arts blending brush and create a really smooth gradation throughout the entire piece. These values are pretty light. The brush ended up pulling a little bit of the value off. So I continue to build up the value with my soft charcoal stick, continuing to work in the cloud area with smooth circular strokes. In this piece, the stormy clouds are the focal point. So I spend a lot of time getting the texture and the value just right. I eventually switch over to my hardest charcoal stick to create more texture and to create specific shapes in the clouds. And I continue with this tool as I work into the mountains in the background and the cactuses in the foreground, slowly building up and refining the shapes to get them the exact way that I want them. The Nitrum charcoal sticks are great for laying in light value and establishing the composition, but they only go to about a five out of 10 on the darkness scale with 10 being a pure black. So once I feel really confident with where my drawing is going, I grab my create a color charcoal pencil and come in and darken the value in the clouds. I'm still using that smooth, quick circular motion so that with every pass and every layer, I'm enhancing and intensifying the texture in the sky. In a landscape, I typically work from the background to the foreground, and this allows me to create really consistent, smooth backgrounds, and then layer those objects that are in the front right on top of them. So before I come in and establish my cactus silhouette, I am erasing and removing the sky that I drew over that area so that I have a clean surface to come in with my china marker. Because the china marker resists the wax, removing the charcoal first allows me to lay this down a little bit smoother. And there is kind of a white halo around these cactuses, but I'm going to be able to smooth that out with my finger and get everything to work seamlessly together. Now that my darkest darks are established with the silhouette in the cactuses, I am realizing that the sky could go a little bit darker. So I come back in again with my soft create a color charcoal pencil and continue to layer up the sky. It is always going to be more forgiving to work from light to dark rather than coming in as dark as possible at the beginning. And this layered approach allows you to constantly judge your values against the whole composition so that you can build up the drawing together and make sure everything works the way that you want it to, always allowing for there to be changes and adjustments along the way. For the foreground, I'm keeping it pretty simple and just creating quick short strokes that resemble the grasses in the desert. Like I said, my focal point or my main area of interest is the sky and that's where I'm spending most of my time. Here I'm using the kneaded eraser to remove some of the value that built up in this part of the sky. I want the sun to be peeking out behind the storm clouds. So I start with my gray Rembrandt pastel to create a lighter value in this area. And then I come in with the China marker and actually add the sun, the highlights on the top of the storm clouds and a little bit of lightning deep in the background. 
I continue to bounce back and forth and go back to my Rembrandt pastel for those softer light transitions and play around until I feel that everything is working together. When you work on your stormy landscape this month, I strongly recommend that you build up your dark values first in light layers and you save your lightest values with your China marker and your pastel for the very end. And now this piece is complete. I hope you learned a ton about working with charcoal and creating a bunch of marks and we can't wait to see what you create. So be sure to use the hashtag SketchboxJune when you post your work online. For more unboxing videos and tutorials, you can check out our YouTube page where you can like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.